In clip three, I'm going to demonstrate for you three different types of symmetry that a graph might have and how to test for that algebraically. In the upper left, we have an example of a function that has y-axis symmetry. And what that means is that if I were to fold the graph over the y-axis, the left-hand side and the right-hand side would line up. In example two, we have a graph that exhibits x-axis symmetry. And what that means is that if I were to fold over the x-axis, the top portion and the bottom portion would line up. In the third example, origin symmetry, what that means is that, well, there's actually two ways to think about origin symmetry. The first way is to think about it as a 180 degree rotation, which essentially means turning it completely upside down. Another way to think about origin symmetry is to give the original graph both x and y axis symmetry at the same time. What that would mean is take your original graph, flip it upside down, and then flip it from right to left. If you end up with the same thing that you started with, that means it has origin symmetry. And then I've thrown in a graph that doesn't have any symmetry at all over here to the right, just so you can see that folding it over the x or y axis would not make a difference. It, it would look like a very different graph if you did that. Okay, now to test algebraically. What you're going to want to do, if you want to test, if you're suspicious that a graph has y axis symmetry and you want to convince yourself that it definitely does, you're going to take every occurrence of x and replace it with negative x. Okay, so I've replaced every x with negative x, and now I'm going to expand. Negative x to the fourth is negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x, which is x to the fourth. Negative x squared ends up being x squared, so this ends up being negative 4x squared. Since the result that we got is the same as it was in the original, this would be an example of y-axis symmetry. So if you take your x and you replace it with negative x and you get the original, this is an example of y-axis symmetry. Now, if you're suspicious that a function or a graph has x-axis symmetry, you're going to do the exact opposite. You're going to take every occurrence of y and replace it with negative y. Now, negative y squared is negative y times negative y, which is y squared. So we have x equals y squared minus 2. And again, we have a situation where the result is the same as the original. And when that happens, you're going to have x-axis symmetry. So if you take a y and you replace it with negative y and you end up with the original, that's going to be x-axis symmetry. Now, if you're trying to test for origin symmetry, you're going to replace both x with negative x and y with negative y. Well, negative y is really just negative y. Negative x cubed is negative x cubed. And a negative times a negative is a positive. Now, if I multiply through by negative 1 on both sides, this negative y becomes a y. And then multiplying this side by negative 1, we end up with x cubed minus 9x. So once again, we have a situation where it's the same as the original. And this happens when we replaced both x with negative x and y with negative y to get origin symmetry. Now, another observation to make is that for going back to the y-axis, notice how the powers of x were all even. So I'm going to make a little note of that. Powers of x are even. Sometimes these types of graphs are called even functions. A similar observation can be made over here. If the powers of y are even, then oftentimes it's going to be x-axis symmetry. An observation to be made over here is that if the powers are odd, you're going to often get origin symmetry. The problem lies when you have a combination of powers that are even and odd, as we do in the last example. We've got powers of 2 and 4, which are even, but we also have, in the same expression, a power that's odd. This is usually the what creates the problem for having no symmetry at all. So just to start, if I replace all the x's with negative x, I end up getting y equals x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus x squared minus 5. Now this is close to the original, but it's not exactly the same. Because it's not the same, it's definitely not going to be 
y-axis symmetry. We just replaced every x with negative x and we did not get the same thing that we started with. Now, just looking, if I replace this y with negative y, certainly that's not going to make it be the same. So it doesn't have y-axis symmetry either. And if I replaced both x and y with their negative counterparts, that's still not going to be the same. So overall, this is not going to have any symmetry whatsoever. So I conclude with two more examples. And the reason I've put these in here is once you do a few practices, you can sort of just look at a function and maybe not even have to do the whole test. You could sort of just reason your way through it. So looking at this, it seems to me since all the powers are even, if I were to put their negative counterparts in, it's going to just turn back to what it was. So I'm really suspicious that this is going to be origin symmetry. So if I take x and replace it with negative x, and I take y and I replace it with negative y, sure enough, this is going to become x squared, as it was in the beginning, and this is going to become y squared. And this is, uh, overall, the result is the same as exactly what I started with. So in this case, I've replaced both, and this is going to be origin symmetry. Now, if I were to graph this, just out of curiosity, does anyone know here what the graph might look like? Well, it's a circle. And the center of that circle is 0, 0, and the radius is the square root of 3. In our last example, we are given a random function like this, or relation. And I think to do the test, rather than plug in right now, I'm first going to just distribute x equals y squared minus y. Once again, I've got this combination of powers that are both odd and even. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it's neither. So just let's use some common sense. If I replace all the y's with negative y, this one's going to change back to the original, but this one's not. So I don't think that's going to work. If I replace this x with negative x, that's going to change this, but it's not going to change that, so that's not going to work. And if I do both, if I take, take x and make it negative x, and I take y and I make it negative y, does this give me the same as that I started with? No, this is not the same. And even if I flip all the signs, it still won't be the same. So my conclusion here is that it's neither. So in summary, if you have the graph in front of you, it sort of guides you as to which test to do. If you don't have a graph, you just have functions, you might want to just look at the powers and, and sort of reason it out. Oftentimes in a test, though, you will have to justify your work by showing the test. So hopefully these examples have helped you. At this time, do any problems that are associated with clip number three.